I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Equipoise myths and misconceptions, and then he calls you Super Dave. Can you share your opinion? I was discussing your mass PED protocol that's in the app with the gym buddy. Two things came up, which we did not agree on. One, he believes that one has to, quote, front load EQ the first two weeks at double the dose you would do per week, as this will have serum levels uh, peak faster. But in my opinion, no matter if you take 100 mg or 1000 mg, the half life stays the same. So peak serum levels will stay reached at the same wallet question. Um, and then I guess the second part of it, he says that the minimum length of EQ should be at least eight weeks because of the long half-life. But again, shouldn't peak serum levels be easily, uh, be reached easily by three, four weeks? Yeah, it's, it's you know, you got to kind of understand what's going on. Uh, yes, EQ does take a long time to build up in the system, like just like DECA does, just like the long-acting testosterones do. So some people, you know, don't have the patience to wait two weeks for the stuff to kick in. So they have to take something faster. Taking more of a, a long acting compound is not going to make it peak faster. It's just once it does peak, you'll have a much higher peak. It's still going to take the same two to three weeks. Um, some people will take like like D ball pills, you know, the first couple of weeks just because they want to get something in their system right away. That's called more front load. That's called like faster front loading because you're putting a fast acting compound in there so that your body starts responding right away. But look, what's the difference? You really can't wait two more weeks for the stuff to kick in. And the the ridiculousness of, of saying, you know what, let's say I do like six week mini cycles. So I'll have guys do six weeks on one anabolic and then they, and with testosterone, and then and then we'll do another six weeks with the testosterone and another anabolic. And then, now, if EQ takes two weeks to kick in, okay, so you're thinking, all right, well, that means I'm only really doing four weeks. No, you're not, because you're getting two extra weeks on the back end. So if you're doing six weeks of it, okay, the first two weeks, you might not really have that much of an effect, but you're going to have week seven and eight, you're still getting an effect from the EQ. That's why if you go to EQ to DECA, while the decker is still kicking and the EQ is already there for an extra two weeks. So you're not losing any time. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you start two weeks, if it takes two weeks for everything to kick in because the testosterone's not kicking in for two weeks anyway. So, I mean, I don't know what people are in such a rush for. It's like, I think people try to want to make it like I'm a scientist. I understand this stuff is long acting. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to trick the body. We're going to get something fast acting in there right away. Who cares? Who cares? You want everything to kind of crescendo together. So the testosterone, the EQ, or the testosterone, the DECA, or the testosterone, the trend and anti, whatever you happen to be taking. Most people use long-acting esters in the off-season for a couple of reasons. Number one, you get better blood levels once they are, are reached. Number two, they're less toxic. The longer-acting compounds that stay in your system longer don't require the liver to break them down as fast. So they have much, much less toxicity. Uh, so you get better, more sustained blood levels, so you get better growth, and then you get obviously less toxicity so you can stay on them longer. And that's why people do that. So, I mean, if you're doing like a six-month cycle, off-season cycle, does it really matter if you start two weeks later, if it takes two weeks to get in? People just get a little ridiculous. But I think people want to pretend that they're like these you know, very sophisticated scientists and they, they can solve all these problems that, that really don't exist, you know, but... They, they make them out to be like, uh, well, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about because I, I know I'm going to give you this stuff to make this work faster. And then we're going to we're going to add we're going to make it long laster because we don't we don't want to we don't want to lose you know the extra two weeks. And there's no magic here, guys. Take the stuff, let it kick in and grow. That's you know, that's the bottom line. Just forget about it. once you start taking anabolics, don't just it's like, you know, you take a pre-workout in the gym and you feel it in what? five, 10 minutes. What does it feel like? Well, you feel mentally alert. You get pumped. You know, you get the endurance thing going on. The nootropics are working on your brain. Steroids don't work like that. Even the fastest acting steroid, which are the orals, you don't really feel when you take them because they're hormones. They're very in the background type of stuff. They're not stimulants. They're not like, boom, they're not going to hit you like that. 
you might have a good workout when you're on them, but you're not, you, you're never going to just feel them. That doesn't, that's not how anabolic steroids work. And they don't, I mean, insulin can hit you pretty fast. You know, if it pushes a lot of, you know, blood sugar into your muscles and you get a pump, but steroidal compounds are just by nature, slow acting. 